Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk more about tie dyeing and just some different designs I do. So stay tuned right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So today I'm going to show you two different uh, tie-dye uh, patterns that I do. I do quite a few and some they're just random. There's really no pattern to it. I just tie a shirt up and go with it. So this first one I'm going to work on is going to be the spider. And these all start with 100% cotton. Uh, you have to have 100% because the dyes only react to natural fibers. So this has been soaked in soda ash for at least 20 to 30 minutes and then uh, put in the uh, spin cycle so it's still uh, damp but not overly wet. And I have turned the shirt inside out. That way if there's any undissolved dye, it'll be on the inside of the shirt and not on the outside. So the first thing we're going to do is called centering the shirt. It's where we find the center and then we fold it so that the two front sides are together and the two back sides are together um, on one side of the fold. That way you have even saturation. If you were to fold it straight in half like this, your two front sides are together on the inside, but then you have a back side and a back side. And as the dye soaks through, it's not an even soak so the, the two layers on this side are not going to look like this side. They're going to be different. So if you put your centers together, your front and your backs together, the front will look the same and the back will look the same. So it's pretty easy to center a shirt. I'm using washable markers. And again, it's on the inside, so if the washable marker does not wash out, it's perfectly fine. All right. Then I'm going to take my two marks and pull them up. Grab my sleeves and pull them together, one inside the other. Make sure they're in there nice and even. Okay. And we're going to grab this again and flip it over. So now you got the center there, the center of the tagline here, and we're just going to fold it towards our center marks. All right. And then we're going to do a spiral. Um, when you have this folded in half and you do a spiral, if you do it right, that's how you get the spider design because when you open it up, the spirals reflect on each other and that gives you the spider legs and stuff. So that's how it works. It's by having it folded and tied just right. So I'm going to do it the spiral part. And you want to keep it as tight as you can because that gives the spider more legs. Okay, so now we got our spiral all tied up, and 
and then I'm going to get the other shirt and get that pattern going because I get my shirts tied then I dye them okay so for this one I'm doing a horizontal peacock swirl so again I have my shirt uh, soaked in the soda ash and spun where it's mostly damp or I mean mostly dry but still somewhat damp and turned inside out now I'm simply going to fold this in half and I take the sleeves and tuck them in so they're not fighting with them so much and now I'm going to take this uh, canning ring here as my guide and I'm going to draw a half circle right in the center of the shirt here. Doesn't have to be exact, this is tie dye. Okay. And I'm going to gather it on this line and then I'm going to tie it using sinew. This is a artificial wax coated sinew and it works great for designs like this where you need it really really tight and so we're going to work on that. Pull it tight. Okay, it's nice and tight. I'm going to go through and get the rest of this tied up. What I like to do just to give me a helping hand so things don't come unfolded is I'll just put some rubber bands here to hold it temporarily. And we're just going to tie every so often to give it some nice lines. There we go. And just tie it off. The wax kind of helps hold the sinew in place, but I always like to safeguard by tying it off so it doesn't come undone during the dyeing process. All right, so there's what will become a peacock fold. Now I'm going to grab my containers and we'll get these ready to dye. All right, so the first one I'm going to work on is going to be this spider spiral. And I do what's called ice dyeing, which means I use ice to make the, mixed with the, the powder to make the liquid that goes through the shirt. When you do it that way, the ice, the coldness in the ice and the way that it drips through the shirt actually causes the uh, different colors to... Um, separate into their uh, interesting different color components and it really gives it a neat look where with uh, just doing straight up liquid dye if you use a red it's just going to be simply red and that's it or a purple it's just, just going to be purple that's it which is fine I do do some liquid dyeing but I like the ice dyeing and the effects it does with the dyes 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ring around this that's going to help contain the ice so we don't waste a lot of ice. And this is just silicone baking rings. I will leave a link in the description box below um, to where you can get quite a few of these supplies on Amazon and then where I get my dyes. Um, so it works very well. Let's see, can I pull this tight enough? Oh, we're gonna make this a snug fit. There we go. Okay, all right. So there's that. So they're just silicone baking rings and they just snap together. Um, if it's too big, I'll just um, overlap it and I'll clip it with uh, clothespins, which I'll probably have to do on the peacock one, but we'll get there in a minute. All right, now for the dies. The dies that I use are professional dies. They're not the kits that you get in the store, uh, which do okay if you're just doing one or two or a group party. But if you really want to get into tie dyeing, I suggest you move it up a little bit into the professional dyes. Um, they're not really that expensive um, overall. It does take some time to grow up your collection. Um, but they give really vibrant colors. Um, they, they're very fade resistant. And I just really love working with them. So let's see what color am I going to do. I'm going to do a bright green today. So um, this is bright green. This is from Dharma. Dharma is where I get most of my dyes, but sometimes I do get dyes from Grateful Dyes. It uh, just depends. But Dharma is where I get most of my dyes. And again, I'll leave uh, a link in the description box below to Dharma. I really, really love them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, have a little measuring spoon here. And um, this is where you would put on gloves if you're worried about getting dye all over you. I do this so much all the time, I really don't care anymore. <laughs> so I just take some dye in here, in this spoon, and then we're going to sprinkle it on the shirt. Like so. Add just a little bit more because it's got to go all the way through the shirt. Okay. All right, there's that. So, what I'm going to do next is go grab the ice and then we'll get this ready for dyeing. So, I'm simply putting the ice right on top. You see why this is kind of necessary to hold the ice from falling everywhere and wasting. And then, since we want to make sure that the soda ash in the shirt does not accidentally get diluted too much, we're going to add some more to the top of this ice here. That'll keep that soda ash at the right pH where the fibers can react to the shirt and stick to the shirt. So I'm going to set this outside in the sun. That's what I do during the uh, summertime is I just set this outside, let the sun and the heat melt the ice, and then I'll show you what we do after the ice is melted for this side. But next, we're going to work on getting that peacock dye done. Okay, so we have our shirt on a bigger pan because it's a little too big to be on that other size pan. And um, it was just these are just regular baking pans with baking racks on them to elevate them up so the liquid can drain through. Again, I will leave links in the description box below where you can get almost all these things to work on your tie-dye adventure. It's pretty fun. All right.
because this is loosey goosey, we're going to go ahead and put in some clips here to hold this in place. That way the ice stays where the ice needs to and doesn't fall out prematurely. enough where I don't have to worry about the ice falling out. All right. Trying to make sure that the folds are facing up. That way the die penetrates the shirt a lot easier. If you have it turned over where the folds are stacked on each other, it's very difficult for the die to actually penetrate through. All right. So we're going to do a bright shirt. I've had a request for um, doing some bright shirts. So this is going to be kind of like the Rasta design, Bob Marley. It's green, orange, and red. I think there's also yellow in there. I'm not sure. So we're gonna go ahead and do that too. Just because those are very, very bright colors. So I am doing bright green, lemon yellow, orange crush, and then bright red from Grateful Dyes. So I'm going to start with the yellow. So there's that. I'm gonna go get some more ice and we're gonna put ice and the soda ash on this one and get it outside as well. Okay, so we're at the point that we can actually uh, work on finishing the spider pattern on our bright green shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and take this ring off because we're done with the ice. Okay. All right gone through all the way which is what we want not ice all over the table all right so now that the ice the dye has gone all the way through we're going to flip this over and you notice I'm wearing gloves now because I'm going to be working with black and this green when the dye is wet it gets everywhere it's not as easy to clean as when you have powder all right, 
So I have already pre-mixed some black dye. And I reused my, my bottle. So I had gotten this from um, the in-store tie-dye kits years ago. But they're hefty bottles. So uh, for my larger dyes, I reuse these. I do have some smaller dye bottles that I really like. Um, they'll be in the description box below as well for finer details. But for what I'm doing, this works. So in order to get the spider to appear, uh, we have to coat the back of this spiral with our contrast color, our spider color. And then once the shirt has been cured and you wash it out, the spider will be on the shirt. So um, one thing to understand when you're doing this spider um, is we're going to coat the back, but we don't want this dye to sink in too far because then it's going to take the rest of the shirt and the spider will just be one glob of color that just takes over the shirt. So we just got to make sure we coat it nicely. evenly okay. all right there we go now I'm just gonna let this sit like this just for a few seconds here because I want the dye to go in a little bit, but then I'm going to flip it back over so it doesn't soak all the way through. Our main color is the green. All right, so we're going to go ahead and flip this. There we go. Fix that right down there. Okay, you can see how the black was starting to come through on the edges. But so far it did not come through up here, which is perfect. Which means we've got a nice even coat right where we need it. Alright, so I'm going to put this in my plastic uh, tub where I um, put all my tie-dyes. That way they can cure for 24 hours in an enclosed environment. And then uh, tomorrow I will bring you back and we're going to wash out this one. And the peacock one that's already in the tote. So see you guys tomorrow for the washout. Okay, so it's been 24 hours and now it's time for the washout. We're doing the bright green spider shirt first and then we'll do the uh, peacock design. So let's get started with putting some cool water on top of the shirt and let it start washing out the soda ash. Now we got most of the soda ash rinsed out of the shirt. Now it's time to get it soaking in some hot soapy water. Okay, so this is the uh, peacock swirl inspired by the Rasta color um, wheel. <clears throat> I did look up the Rasta colors to make sure that I was doing the right color scheme and uh, Rasta does not have orange. They have yellow, red, and green, not orange. So this has one extra color so I cannot call it a Rasta design but it is Rasta inspired. So we're going to start rinsing this one out. All right, so now that this is mostly wet washed out as far as the soda ash and quite a bit of the dye has been washed out already, I'm gonna go ahead and soak this in hot soapy water. And then I'm gonna start rinsing out this green one. And I'll show you 
here what it looks like. So this green one, you can see how dark that water is. That's how much extra dye is still in here. Because when dye bonds with the fabric, there's still going to be a, quite a bit of extra dye that's trapped in here that we have to get rinsed out. So that's why we do the hot bath. So I'm going to be washing both this and this one in the hot soapy water until I get the water clear. And then we're going to put it in the washer. Okay, so I have the shirts rinsed out pretty good where I'm going to set them in the wash. Here is what was supposed to be the key peacock design and I realized um, that I folded it wrong. So it's not the peacock, but it's still a really pretty pattern. So I'll show you what it looks like. So it's a really pretty circle design. This one um, is the spider. And so I'll show you what that looks like. Here's the spider design. And then if I turn it over in the back, you can see it even more. Spider. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the wash with the other shirts that I did. And then I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. Okay, so here's the finished result of the bright green spider t-shirt after it's been washed and dried. This is the front view and you can see the spider there. I'm going to turn it around so you see what the back looks like. You can really see the spider on the back as well. Um, so that's an example of the, the black that uh, went through enough to make a very distinguished design. If it wasn't allowed to soak enough, the spider would not show as clearly. And if it was allowed to soak too much, um, it would take over the shirt and the details would not be as defined. So that is a very, very good spider. I'm thankful it turned out as good as it did. Okay, so I'm doing an even, even closer look at this shirt because one of the things I wanted to showcase is why I love doing the ice dye. If you recall, I only used one green when doing the ice dye, but you can see all the different colors that are now been kind of picked apart by the ice uh, dye. You've got the darker green and we've got some yellow, some yellow green so this is why I like to ice dye because using even just one color you get an array of colors within that color which is pretty pretty cool so I just want to throw that in there as well and just give you another look at the spider design I think it's a really really cool design if you don't like spiders it's not but just the way that it turns out, all the detail in it, I just really, really love this design. And it's quite simple to do once you get the technique down. The results are simply amazing. Alright, so that is the uh, Rasta inspired color palette that I uh, did. And it was supposed to be a, a vertical or horizontal peacock swirl. But because I placed the, full, uh, the circle fold in the wrong spot, it ended up being a circle instead. Um, the, I had folded it right here, which was fine. And then I did the half circle here. But when I unfolded it, it was here. Um, so instead of doing the half circle here on this fold, I actually should have done it up here so it would have made half circles up and down and I'm going to show you another shirt that I did that actually is the peacock swirl it came out correctly but it's going to be a side to side peacock swirl so at least you'll get to see kind of what the design was supposed to look like 
All right, there is what a peacock swirl design is supposed to look like. You see how the, the arcs are half and not a circle in the center. This one I really, really like. It's inspired by the colors that are used in That's a Beach because it reflects kind of the Caribbean kind of ocean kind of colors that you would see. And I really like that color palette, so I went ahead and used it with this design. I really like how this shirt turned out. It's really, really pretty. Okay, so tie-dyeing. Again, it's something I love to do here on the homestead. And I just thank you so much for watching this video with me and just seeing some different designs that I can throw together. And there's a plethora of different designs and colorways that you can play with things to get different design concepts to really, really pop. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video here. And if you want me to do more videos of the different tie-dyes that I do, make sure you comment down below. So I know, you know, whether you guys like this type of video or not, because it is part of what I do here on the homestead. So I just thank you so much again for watching this video. If you loved it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. There's lots of people who are really getting into the tie-dye craze. I thank you for being with me on part of this journey today. If you haven't already, I'd ask that you click the subscribe button down below so you can stay part of the journey and all the different faucets I do here on the homestead. And I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.